I am Jessica Ann Pressler, licensed clinical social worker coming to you from the West Coast. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Jessica. And I'm Sylvia Puentes, registered nurse, faith-based coach, and mentor coming to you from the East Coast. If you enjoy our YouTube videos, please hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channels. So the, these past weeks, th for three weeks now, we have discussed the overt narcissist, the covert narcissist, and the malignant narcissist. And this week and, and a few weeks coming, we're going to discuss um, common words used to either describe the narcissist or describe what they're doing uh, in, the, in the relationship, just common, common words that are used in the literature. And we thought it'd be helpful to explain to you what it means. And this week we are conquering i don't know we're discussing uh narcissistic supply flying monkeys and gaslighting so um jessica why don't we start with narcissistic supply why don't you tell us what that is so narcissistic supply is what is is what is almost like a drug to a narcissist or even the air that they breathe they can't survive they don't feel they can they'll gasp for air if they don't get narcissistic supply and it doesn't, and the, it, let's just say it's like air, the air doesn't, it's like a balloon. It doesn't stay and it, it can, eventually it comes out. So it's constant for them. They constantly need it, which um, is sometimes why, you know, they can exhaust the person that they're in the relationship with and then move on to someone else. Just maybe not giving them, if it's a romantic relationship, for example. So um, it's admiration, it's attention. And um, in the beginning, when the, let's just say it's a romantic relationship or even a work relationship, whatever it is in the beginning, before you really can see their fallibles, <laughs> or the foibles, sorry, it's um, you are telling them how great they are and how smart they are and all that stuff. And they're just feeling great. It's just, it's the, like I said, it's like the air that they breathe or it's the drug. They're feeling a high from that. But it, it's not always the positive affirmations. I mean, for sure, it, positive affirmations will always make them feel that way. But even drama, they can, even you'll find that will create drama um, or even negative can still be neg good attention to them. For example, you know, you're fighting with them about something because they've done something, they cheated on you or whatever it is, but you're still fighting for the relationship or you're, and, and that's also the, the energy. It's like energy for them. That's also a narcissistic supply, but they live for it. Right. So um, what would you say is a way of knowing if you're not sure if you're with a narcissist or if you are that narcissistic supply to that person? Well, it's very exhausting because in the relationship, they don't, you know, they're not doing anything for you for the relationship, everything they are doing is for themselves. They're not going to compromise. They're not, if you come to them and you say, well, what about my feelings? You know, can't you see it from my perspective? They just can't, it's not in their brain. It's impossible for them to do that. Uh, you'll see it's a very lopsided relationship. You'll find that you are if, if, if romantic or friendship or, uh, a, you know, familiar family relationship to all of it. You'll find that you're the only person doing the work. Um, they may fake it in the beginning, but it's not consistent. A relationship that's that's with an, another partner, it's not always perfect. There'll be times where they're, you know, pe people can have a, even a narcissistic trait, but not be, you know, it's a, it's a spectrum. But um, you, you'll find that you're the only one doing the work and you're going to get frustrated because you're going to feel they're not listening. They're not hearing you. They don't care about your feelings. It's just everything is all about them. Yeah, so you're definitely not feeling balanced in this relationship, emotionally exhausted, um, you know, mentally exhausted. And, you know, I think that that's also one of the things that their goal is to whittle you down. So, you know, so um, power and control, power and control. Exactly. Um, and what about um, gaslighting? So gaslighting, are, it, there's several different ways they do it is to make you feel uh crazy maybe um or that your your way your your feelings aren't valid uh for example this is a romantic example but for example you look over and you see your husband's phone and it and the way that he's acting you think that maybe he's having an affair and you look at the phone and you even catch a glimpse at some very romantic exchange so he will either completely deny it and say it never happened it wasn't there even so you saw it but he's erased it now and you know so he'll deny it 
or he'll deflect and he won't even address what you said. And he'll say, well, you know, last year you spoke to, you know, John and that was, you know, and if you can do that, you know, why can't I, you know, or maybe not even talk about himself anymore. It's just, it's all about you now or say to you, you're too sensitive. You're, you know, this is about your past. This is, you, you only think that because you had someone cheat on you five years ago. This is not, and, and it just deflects. Everything's not about them anymore. So the actual, and then all of a sudden you start questioning yourself. And if you come from a childhood, like I did, where I was told that my feelings were not valid, that I was too sensitive. So now uh, let's just say I'm with someone who's saying the same thing. Of course, I might just believe them. Right. So, Right. You, you start to think that perhaps you're delusional or you're, you know, this is all me going on in your head. It's not as bad as you're probably thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that some of the terms they use is like you're being paranoid or it's, right. you know, it's, it's not how you're saying it or, or what you're saying that didn't actually happen that way or things like that. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. So again, you know, just leading the other person to uh, feeling defeated and exhausted. It is exhausting. And the self-esteem, you know, you lose yourself potentially. Right. You lose right. yourself. Right. So the next term is flying monkeys. Mm-hmm. So flying monkeys comes from the uh, Wizard of Oz. The concept uh, is, is coined from that because the, the Wicked Witch of the West I believe <laughs> has uh, monkey sold monkeys, the flying monkeys. That's like her soldiers, the the ones that will be loyal to her and will do her bidding. So when the the uh, narcissist feels like either they're going to be found out, or you're going to tell on them, or they're going to look negative in, in in the relationship, even if in a family again or work wherever it is, the narcissist will try to be proactive and recruit his flying his her or they they are flying monkeys. And by doing so, they will probably tell the everyone else all these terrible things about you that are not true, lies, mostly lies. And by the time they're done with them, they've recruited them and they um, will potentially do um, abuse by proxy. So now not only are they abusive, but now you have pe- these, you know, so if it's in a work situation, they may be gossiping about you. Or if it's um, a romantic situation, you people have lost their families their own families they've lost their friends because somehow the narcissist has manipulated them into believing their story and and then you're left alone yeah i know i can personally attest to having experienced this in a relationship that i was in um and it was just terrible um you know i'll use an example if we were Uh, meeting up with either family or friends, um, he would go ahead of me in terms of almost setting up the whole, you know, the whole situation where um, without even being asked, he'd say, oh, you know, um, Syl was just getting at me for this, 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 or whatever, Um, completely not speaking truth really um of this of what happened but letting everyone know that something happened and that you know my emotions were out of control or what i said or whatever and it was very isolating Mm -hmm. um very uh hurtful Mm -hmm. and you know it really um kind of like um removed me from being part of the group Right. Because now they were all talking or and had this here, opinion. They're all here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And and things were obviously never the way that he laid them out to be. <laughs> and I and I didn't and I didn't even have an opportunity because really it's it's not to share with people what happens in our personal relationship, but you know, I didn't even have an opportunity to really express and 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 at this point these people were already kind of like charmed by him so right and it leaves you alone and uh, and and then the loss the grieving is not just for the narcissist and what you thought the relationship was but it's also for these people as well right right Uh, yeah and and it just you know with these relationships and these tactics that they use Mm -hmm. it chips away 
right. at the other person. As you know, we said in the beginning, you know, they their intent perhaps is to whittle the person down, to destroy their self esteem, to really you know make them feel yeah. defeated. And, and and it makes them feel powerful. I mean, right. it, that's part of the high too. That's the narcissistic supply. So they actually get a high or it makes them feel better about themselves when they hurt you or when you when get they, Right, right. Things like that. Right. And then the warning is that I know that I was always trying to figure out, you know, like, how can I make this better or whatever? But there was nothing really that I could have done to make this better because that was right. an issue that that he had, and mm -hmm. there was nothing that I could have possibly done to make it better. And that's something that's important to know too, because sometimes let's go back to gaslighting for one minute. Uh, people may think that if they record the situation, you know, to or or take a picture of the screenshot of what they saw on the on the um, phone, will make will make it better either showing other people or showing uh, or certainly showing that other person. I can tell you now it's a good thing to do for you because when you start questioning your own sanity, you can look and that's important. But I mostly, if you bring it to the narcissist and say, but look, look, I, you know, I recorded our conversation. They're going to turn and say, you're crazy. What kind of person right. record the conversation? And it, it, it suddenly it, you'll find in these relationships that it never becomes the matter at hand. Whatever you came to them with has has immediately been deflected onto something that you did wrong, and you, and it, you'll just get beaten up again. You'll always get beaten up. You're they're never gonna see the truth. <laughs> they don't even know, and I don't even know if they always know the truth. So not either they're purposely manipulating away from it, or they just don't even know the truth because they can't tolerate the truth. Right. Exactly. So, so you you can do all you can to to, you know, if you need to remember or to prove that's fine for you, but it's just going to hurt you and frustrate you more if you bring, you know, if you use it and tell them, I can tell you that personally, because they yeah. all, so but you all, they, you all have proof and I've done it. I've shown proof in my hand and handed it over. And the person looked at me in my eyes and said, what's right here isn't real and stood strong and looked me in the eyes. It's, it's a crazy thing to be part of, but at the time, you know, you started saying, well, Maybe I'm not remembering correctly. You know, you can really do enough. You do that. You you become the flying monkey too <laughs> for yourself. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it, this is not by any means a healthy type of relationship. No. No matter no no matter who you are, this is not a healthy type of relationship because ultimately, you know, relationships should bring stability, emotional, physical, mental stability you know and so by any means this is not a normal type of stable relationship so as we say you know um it can take time before you even recognize that you're in this type of relationship it's because you're really very nice right exactly and then you may be emotionally so emotionally invested that you're thinking well maybe we can make this work you know again they lack empathy this is not going to change so you know, we urge people to really, really think of, is this the type of relationship I want to stay in right. and then create boundaries if you decide to stay or you cannot leave? Boundaries are key and leaving ideal. But if you stay to at least emotionally put a boundary up, you know, things can happen, but you can, so you just have to lower your expectations. So let's just say it's a family event and you go there and you just have to, and it's I'm not saying it's easy to do, believe me, it's very painful, but you have to, if you're going to go to that event and let's say it's your mother and you're, and you have, and instead of it, which I did, I, I always expected her to be different. I always expected her that this is the day that she's going to love me. This is the day that she's going to. And I, so I always was, my expectations were always here. And I always, and the fall was really hard. So one of the ways to protect yourself is to go into a situation and just say, my, I'm just going to, I'm going here for, you know, Sarah's wedding and to be there for Sarah and to be a part of the family, but I'm not going to have an expectation where my mother is going to suddenly love me today as an example. Mm -hmm. And that is mm -hmm. protective. It's hard to do. It's easy for me to say that right now, but that's the kind of things and emotional boundaries that you can learn to you know, do for yourself. We are coming to the end. Okay. Our time. But um, 
Thank you, Sylvia. I know this, I know you're leaving soon to go on your vacation and I really <laughs> appreciate what you did. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. And don't forget, if you enjoy our videos, please hit the subscribe button. See Bye. you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>